Welcome back everybody, I am Just Zack and today we are going to have a look at Below the Stone, an extraction, deep down mining action roguelite game that just came out into early access and also for full transparency here, please keep in mind that I did receive a free key from the developer. That said, I already played one hour and I think 25 minutes precisely before this recording, so we're gonna jump in after like three or four runs that I did previously and 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 I'm gonna show you <laughs> I'm not gonna cut that out sorry and I'm gonna show you what this game is about first things first though as always we're gonna have a look at the options menu and frankly there isn't much I mean apparently there's much to come but right now we have audio settings actually I tweaked them a little bit wrapped up the music brought down the effects a little bit because I found some of the effects being surprisingly loud while the music was surprisingly quiet at least for me personally also video would be nice to at least have some resolution but overall okay it's decent control settings well we have one thing we also have a test menu for for some kind of reason no idea about there uh, yeah, you can also play this game somewhat with a controller, but I tried to, or at least I tried to play this game with a controller uh, previously with my 360 one and it kind of worked, but to be fair, the game also says that that is also a work in development. This is also why I decided to play with keyboard and mouse. That said, let's go and um, play my character Fika Zert and he's currently in Cave Layer 1. Apparently I haven't died a single time. And it says only 60 gold, I must have spent it all. But yeah, let's go below the stone. And this is my current character. This is our hub world. So when you boot up the game, you have a short tutorial segment, which actually is very solid in teaching you the base mechanics. And then you are pretty much right where I am right here with your tutorial equipment, so to speak. And then you go in ahead. So the core gameplay loop is going to be, we're going to talk to this guy, accept some missions, and then go down below, so to speak, on the first layer, at least, of the cave right now for me. And fulfill these missions, get some stuff. But before we do, what is this hub world um, consistent of? Or consisting of, for example. This is our tutorial guy. He tells us a little bit of, about the world and some tips, for example. Um, they just essentially we are apparently an apprentice of this mining company or the dwarven kingdom and there's this well deep cavern down below that some people also wonder if it is even alive because it is constantly changing probably to kind of incorporate the roguelike mechanics which is actually kind of cool and well it seems like apprentices are always being sent down here to do stuff I would have guessed we're here to keep mining for the company, but I never paid any tribute and so. And some of the missions are just to slay stuff. But apparently that's that's a thing, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. There's also this one who's kind of trick and treat. I don't know, it's a mage. Um, this one hasn't done much. And we have this goblin. Who's, this is kind of my favorite character. J just look at this grin. He's beautiful. And this is our merchant, by the way, who sells some random equipment. So far, everything that we see here is something that I have. Um, or have better stuff of, like a better pickaxe, better, better equipment. But for example, the current helmet, the Bone Shaman helmet, is something that I bought from him, which is better than my other equipment, for example, that I can currently craft. I can actually kind of craft this, but this takes like 50 bones, which I don't have. So that was a good investment of my gold. You can also sell um, not just your equipment, everything, pretty much everything you find, and you're gonna find a lot in the caverns down below. So, I did it. it. Let's go back real quick. So as you can see, we have a, a typical slot bar here. I have a sword, a couple of pickaxes, and it's also like the b better your pickaxe, the more valuable ore you can mine down below. For example, with this copper pickaxe, supposedly I'm now able to mine some iron, and that's kind of my mission for this video, for example. I'm gonna try to find some iron uh, while show showcasing the game to you. And I couldn't do that before. But the thing is, um, well, I'm gonna get to that in a second. So we, we can also craft potions, which is something I haven't really done though, because if you look at these ingredients and maybe what I have, I mean, I have a bunch of mushroom caps. I'm not even sure if I have that many pure rotors. So far, I found um, these things, again, after three to four rounds to be very expensive to craft. This requires a lot of materials and hovering over these different things, I don't even really know what they do. I kind of do. Give me a minute to catch my breath 
region. So it, of course this heals me, but we don't know like how strong, how much. It's just a little bit of lore text. And well, I get a lot of mushroom cups, which also has food and heals us. So I haven't really seen much of an incentive to really invest into potion crafting. Maybe they're like super powerful, but you know, uh, considering how much I need to pay to craft one and um, how much you still find of regular ingredients in the cavern, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, I haven't mu found much use of this. Also, of course, this is a roguelite in the sense that if you die down in the caverns, you your stuff is gone so uh, and there's also apparently no way to retrieve it so if it's gone it's gone you die well all your current stuff is gone you don't get anything of that bad you don't get a second chance apparently you don't even get like as part of it back it's just gone even though some npcs kind of have told me that there's also apparently other apprentices that have of course died in the caverns below and we can find the equipment i haven't found anything of valuable like from disease uh, disease corpses or anything that suggested that to me there's some um, chests that I found, but those haven't been very much impressive either. But again, we're going to get to that. So what I'm trying to get at is this is why we have a bank where we can also spend our money to um, make it bigger, so to speak, with the bank slot. It seems like even though it's a bank, we can't store our money. So actually, I don't know 100% what happens if we die to our money. Maybe we keep it, I guess. But we would lose probably all our equipment and items. That's why you want to store some stuff here. Because again, it's kind of an extraction roguelike as well. As you can see, my different ingots, which um, I crafted from ores and some basic like previous equipment that I've used are stored here. So should I die, um, I'm weaker, but I at least have a little bit of equipment left. So this is what you uh, can do there. And you can craft with this blacksmith, which is the one you find in the tutorial. And it's very much streamlined, so you can spend your resources here to craft things. And I think the neat thing is, as far as I can tell, it does consider the amount of ingots and the crafting items you have stored in your bank, which is a very nice quality of life thing. Oh, it's actually 30 bones. I, th I thought it was 50 before, but I also re applied my time before the official release, so maybe they tweaked this. So right now, I want to go for iron, because this is better equipment. Look at this. This iron helmet is even worse than my bone shaman helmet. So that was a very good investment with the shopkeeper. But the iron uh, chest bed, for example, yes. Two resistance, better. Currently, I have a value of 16. Uh, well, we have a couple of items. I even have a crossbow, which for range combat is nice. We have a torch. We have some healing items, and yeah. This is what we will use to get into. Other than that, of course, my armor, my little bit of money. There's some accessory slots that I haven't gotten into. But now, let's see what the core gameplay loop is actually about. Also, by the way, so far, I haven't found anything that allowed me to like add more people to this hub world or to get some meta progression to have more item variety or so. So far, I couldn't really influence the hub for this, what I'm trying to say. Maybe that's a thing later for now, but again, after three, four rounds, I haven't found anything to do here or to even like suggest that this might happen. But I mean, it's a big place, so maybe. Oh, never saw this goblin there down. That's kind of cool. So maybe the tavern is going to be important later on. But yeah. So when you do want to go down below, you talk to this old guy, want to earn a fortune, grab a quest or three and start digging. So we can choose up to three quests, which are always somewhat randomized and give us different rewards. And of course, um, the more quests we do, if I do one quest, I get this reward um, as well. If I do, que uh, do uh, two quests, I get this one. And if I do three, I also get this chest. So far, finally, I always found the first reward after one mission to be the best, because so far this has always been just flat up 200 gold, which kind of makes this a little bit not as important, because 200 gold straight up is very good. And the other ones were kind of like, usually the middle one is like okay equipment that is on the same level as mine or slightly worse, and the chest always gave me just some coal or iron. Or, uh, not iron, or copper ore or something um, that I had already. So the first one was always the best for me, is what I'm trying to say. But maybe I was just very unlucky with the other ones. So I want to select three quests. Definitely slay 10 small green slime, 50 gold, pretty good. And this is very easy. I'm not going to select slay nine bats, because bats are not very dangerous and strong down in the cavern. But they are kind of spread out so far. Like, I choose this on, like, my first or second run and it took me forever to find um, 
um, nine bats. But maybe again, I was just very unlucky. I'm gonna go with coal. Coal is super easy to find. And prismium ore, very cool. The thing is, I don't know where to get prismium ore. And also don't even know if I can mine this. I'm not sure if the game keeps this in mind. I mean, 92 gold is okay. So I'm gonna play it safe and select um, nine fossils. So again, now if I would beat all three missions, I would get all these three rewards, but I can extract early on as well. The main idea is you have to uh, fulfill at least one mission, otherwise you can't leave the cavern. But so far, uh, I also haven't really found much of a reason to not just do all three, cause um, HP management, for example, is not much of an issue. You find a lot of food items throughout the game. I think, again, I only once finished a run earlier with like two missions cause I was too lazy to find like nine bats or something like this. So um, this is the map always randomly generated you always start near this guy who's essentially an old miner down here who gives us a few tips let's cross another novice miner coming down for riches here's something you should know rookie using those escape pods can be dangerous sometimes leaving with the mission incomplete is better than losing all your stuff i'll see you around soon i'm sure yeah so once i fulfill one of these missions there's going to be an extraction button which is going to call in like a drill mine and we need to survive like a certain amount of time until we can actually escape and in that time a bunch of enemies are trying to get us i'm gonna show you that of course after we did all these missions or at least two of them let's see how this run goes but that is also so far uh, the most dangerous thing that i have encountered because the actual runs again because of all the food items are so not really that dangerous but you know, um, for now, let's actually go. I want to actually collect these green things because these are so-called, let's go into my bag right now. These are glow wheat and they give us, if I now eat a glow wheat, let's actually put it here. Uh, wait, uh, close the back, select seven and I'm going to eat this and now we see a little bit more, which is very important because the caverns down below, what a surprise, are very dark. And these mushrooms, I first of thought these would be poisonous mushrooms actually, but these heal us for five HP each and as you can tell, there's a lot of around and I also have a lot, so this is kind of my primary healing uh, stuff so far and of course there's some yeah we're, we run around there's a bat right here we're gonna fight it i have a decent sword these are early enemies i have like tier three ish enemy and sometimes also caves um, or a caveman can happen if you mind stuff so. well and usually that deals a lot of damage but luckily it didn't do that much right now i'm gonna eat two mushrooms right now oh the glue weed is actually i'm gonna eat this one luminous fungus because this lasts for two minutes it's a little bit purple. We can also stack them if we want for even more light, I suppose. Oh, what is this purple stuff? So, and of course, with pickaxe, we can mine through most of this stuff. Ooh, I have this. I've never seen this before. This is amethyst shards. Ooh, okay. This is one of these things I couldn't have mined with my current pickaxe, but it might have been, destro been destroyed because of the cave-in. Very interesting. So, by the way, this is either tin. Yeah, it's tin. Yes. Because, uh, again, my main reason uh, to go down here right now is not necessarily the quest. Here we go, gain some gold, uh, coal. It's to find iron. And I haven't really found much iron yet. So that's kind of my idea. As you can see, uh, there's some sparkles in the dark that indicate, okay, there's some kind of ore if we go over there that we can collect. So we don't necessarily always need to find the pathway. And this is, yeah, amethyst. I can't mine this because my pickaxe isn't good enough. So right now, and yeah, oh, man, we're so fast. I'm so uh, sorry, guys. I hope you can keep track. So much is happening right now. So I collected eight out of eight coal, and now I could already start to call the escape pod. But of course, we are not going to do this because I would like to find iron. That was also kind of my mission in the entire last run I did, and that failed uh, because I didn't find any iron. You can also mine these things, which so far I only, only get like some copper from us. So can you also mine these bigger stones? You can. Oh, like here. There we go. A bit of copper. Nice, nice, nice. Let's get some... Of, of course, you can also place down torches, by the way. Which I did in my first runs, but you only have so many torches. And surprisingly enough, um, wood is a... Which you need to craft for torches, for example. Wood is a very valuable resource. Because, well, it turns out wood isn't really growing in the caverns. Oh, another cave-in! Wow. Usually that only happens like once per round. Okay, there's one of these goblins we're gonna fight 
There we go. We're gonna circle around. Enemies actually have a different AI behavior, which of course doesn't sound that it's surprising, but it's actually kind of cool. They're not always just mindlessly running at you. Sometimes they, you know, charge at you. Sometimes they kind of circle around. They're always a little bit moving. So that makes combat engaging, but there's also a few other things I would like to say about the combat, but that's gonna happen later. There we go, I'm gonna pick this up. So happy, lucky cavens right now we're having. Okay, we also have two out of nine fossils. I'm gonna go in this territory. As you can see, there's different biomes which have different enemies and also usually different ores. There's a little bit of a rune here which have these, I don't know, I, I'm gonna call these goblin guys. I don't even know if they are supposed to, but yeah, these guys. So yeah, this is actually kind of the best source of wood I have found so far, just broken boxes and barrels. Oh, this one has a sword. When I saw one with a sword. Can we get this? No, we can't. Uh, legit never saw one with a sword. Usually they have a mace like this guy. All right, 91 HP. But I have pretty decent equipment, so this shouldn't be much of a problem. I'm gonna circle around. See, this guy is a ranged guy. He's not gonna come run at us. He's gonna throw his, his spears at me while the others try to get us. Can also break the spears. This is actually one of the sounds why I turned down the effects volume, because this breaking spear sound um, with the default settings was very loud to me. Oh, two arrows. Well, again, as I said previously, there's some chests here, but so far I have never really found anything too interesting in these chests, I have to admit. I always hope... Oh, this one... <laughs> is this actually supposed to be a maze, or is it just, you know, like a cooking pan? So is this tin that we found, or did I find some iron by chance? Lining cloth, again, there's a lot of stuff you can find. No, no iron, by the way. And you have to kind of manage your inventory. The further deep down you go, the more you fill up your bag, and you have to make a choice what you actually want to take back to the surface. But also, as I said, we have these different missions, and the kind of the lore suggests that, you know, it's the Dwarven Kingdom that kind of forces us to go down here and risk our life for the Dwarven Kingdom for this, I think, mining operation. So this is why I originally expected, oh, okay, this chest is kind of bugged out, still says open, but again, early alpha, that's fine. But so far, um, at least by my expectation, I thought, okay, so I have to mine X amount of ore and coal, so and the uh, when I go back to the hub, I essentially have to pay taxes, pay tribute. But that hasn't been the case so far. You can just call, um, choose to kill some monsters, which I guess suggests that we save, make the mine a little bit safer so. But yeah, that I'm still, I'm kind of missing the influence and the um, connection with the lore, but I'm, I'm a nerd like this. So I think this is the one, right? I can't mind this. So in my eyes, as someone who has applied a couple of mining games, I always thought this is iron. And of course I couldn't mine it previously, but my pickaxe literally says, looks strong enough for iron. So I should be able to collect this, but I am not. So I'm not sure if maybe it's silver or so. This is kind of my issue right now. I want to collect iron, but I do not know how I find it. Another cave, wow. Did they wrap it up? I currently, uh, previously I played before the official release. I never had that many caves in. Kevin's. Maybe I'm just that un unlucky right now. Uh, another one. Are you kidding me? I swear. Usually I have like one per run. This is the fourth one already or so? Wow. What is going on? Okay, but a couple of corn. So we still gotta find some... Yeah, again. In my book, this would be iron. Maybe my pickaxe is bugged out. Or this is not iron and it's something like silver. But... That is still the problem, um, or at least it opens up the problem for me, that I do not know what iron is then, if this is not iron. So I have to kind of look around. By the way, there's also boss enemies in the game. But again, I'm on the third or fourth run, so... I have no idea right now how to find them. To fight or to summon a boss or collect the boss. I know there's different layers and we saw that early on. So I guess it would be when we find, you know, the staircase or whatever that would lead to the next layer. This is where we would find the boss. But I frankly, I do not expect that we will find the boss on this one. I actually need more glow weed. I'm surprised we don't have that many. Usually I have a lot of that. Okay. There's some stuff here. Oh, what's there? Sparkle? There he is. 
But we could also follow the path race. Right now I'm following the sparkle because I'm still kind of hoping to get some iron somewhere. And you, the good thing is you always need coal. Because you need coal to combine that with the different ores to then get the ingots of the appropriate thing. Like, uh, well, iron ore, which is the one I'm looking for. Combine that with coal and then we get the iron ingots. And we need the iron ingots to craft iron armor, for example. Which is the one I would like to get at next. Yeah, let's take this way. Why not? So, again, the question is, uh, let's get some glow weed. I'm not actually sure if these guys attack you. These are actually very dangerous. I only attack them with a ranged weapon, because when you attack them, they actually um, spore some AoE. That is very dangerous. I mean, they're getting closer. Do we actually attack? Like, we actually don't. Ha! Huh. I always just attack them <laughs> preemptively. But it seems like these guys actually are not hostile. Look at them. This is what I mean. Kind of cool that the AI kind of evades us. Or, you know, behaves differently depending on the enemy. I do enjoy that. So is this? No, this is probably, yeah. This is just tin. So again, where do I find iron? This is my mission for this one. We are really full. I'm actually surprised we haven't encountered any slimes. Usually slimes are the ones I encounter like so, so many of. Oh, get more glow wheat. Definitely need more of those. First time I'm having a problem with this. Um, there's these, I don't know. I call them aroundness or arounds because, well, video games. Usually that's what they're called in different games. There's also bats. But they could also be just potato people, because these ones drop potatoes, which heal you for like 10 HP each. So um, very good healing there. I don't know. I've never, by the way, brought down some of these stalactites, stalagmites. I am sure I'm using the terms wrong there. Maybe it's here. But this is my mission right now. We're going to run around a little bit to try to find iron. Can I actually get past you? What? happens if you're right here but just for showcase i'm gonna shoot this one and then they're gonna poof, do this and this doesn't look dangerous but this deals a lot of damage to this purple cloud so this is the crossbow by the way decently powerful this is still the first one so very good starting item so to speak really need more glow wheat a lot of healing items here more potato people actually I wonder if we just can't pa uh, go past them or if we can just go past them sorry again no, this is tin then, right? Okay, I'm gonna find you. Some of these also charge you. You might have seen this with some of the um, previous goblin ones. Also, I still don't know what some of the other items do. For example, the bat drop this guano. Well, it's smelling funny apparently, but I actually don't know what it is doing. We're gonna eat this. And there we go. Oh, sorry. Let's close the back. There's so much more coal. So far, it seems like the maximum stack of items you can get is always 64. Reminiscent of older games, so to speak, I feel. Okay. Oh, you actually hit me. There we go. Oh, look at all these. Oh, no, that's just tin. Never mind. I actually have so much tin. I'm not sure if I need this. Again, I originally... Ex I mean, maybe to sell it for money, but also the shopkeeper doesn't sell that much interesting stuff yet. But I guess... Take what you can, at least right now we still have a decent amount of inventory space. There's some fossils here. But again, my main mission right now is to try to find iron. I'm pretty sure this is all tin and not iron. Can double check with the inventory in a second. I'm so surprised. I guess this tells you how randomized the runs actually are. So many more caves than suddenly, and so many more bats and potato people, for example, but no slimes yet. And again, usually so far I've encountered so, so many slimes. Okay, um, this currently lasts for 50 seconds. I mean, considering how far I get out during this run, maybe we actually <laughs> accidentally stumble across, uh, across the bosses, so that would be slightly funny. Still need to look out for some... Some, 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 sorry. Now oh, there's copper. Copper is decent. This is my current equipment, so can't hurt to have a little bit of that. I actually forgot what I was wanted to say, sorry. So current run, more tin. Pretty sure this is all just tin. Oh, there's a dark cave to the right. Yeah, tin ore. Ah, sure, let's go over there. I mean, what else can I do but, you know, explore and hope to maybe stumble across a new biome that then has the iron? Okay, let's actually get some of this glow wheat going. There we go. More potato people. I'm pretty sure this is, again, just uh, tin. Yes. 
So I think that's the way. I've seen all these things, but we need iron and fossils if I come across them and slimes. So I, I think this is my go-to way right now. I want to try to find a new biome that then hopefully has some iron. Okay, these guys, let's actually not attack them. Some sparkle to the left, but I don't think this is going to be anything of interest to us. I still want to get this glow weed occasionally. And some of these bigger mushrooms. I think the bigger, uh, the big var variations always... Oh, are they fighting each other? No, I think they tried to fight me and then hit those guys. Interesting that that can happen. There we go. Now the fighting sound, because uh, the break spear sound was so loud previously, I turned down the effects, as I said earlier. Now the sword sound is surprisingly quiet. But I guess this is a good moment uh, to tell about how I feel about combat. Generally, I like the AI, and it's basic, but it's kind of fun. My biggest gripe so far has been with the hitboxes. With my own hitboxes and the enemies. Because if you, this is always very hard to convey in a video. But if you look closely, sometimes it seems like I'm not really hitting the enemy. And often I feel like my hitbox is also surprisingly big. And often it feels like, okay, I got hit. I didn't expect to get hit. Sometimes it just happens with all the things going on. And finally some slime. So usually I just run around, get hit. And... Usually, I'm already in this mindset that, okay, I don't feel like I can really dodge. I just know I will get hit. Which, especially later on, if there's a lot of enemies, and maybe you could uh, already saw that there's also a pretty big amount of, like, um, when we get hit, we get thrown back quite a long distance in comparison, like, to other games. And, you know, when you just get hit a bunch of times and get thrown around the... Uh, uh, arena so to speak or around the map that can feel a little bit frustrating especially again can't mind this when you fight a lot of enemies which so far the most enemies you fight are when you call the escape bot which we are going to do soon these guys actually follow me I wonder if they can turn us down the good thing is this is kind of like I don't know <laughs> uh, kind of like a Ooh, okay this might be new maybe we find some iron here like a light source following us no, you're not iron, are you? I mean, this takes a little bit longer. Are you iron? Oh, that would be so good. Yes. Oh, no, it's coal. <laughs> oh, man, I was happy for a sec. Oh, it's lead. Interesting. But it says lead is mostly for ammunition. But hey, that's a resource I've only, like, randomly gained before. So this is new. So these things are new. I'm trying not to hit these guys' mushrooms. So maybe this means I might also get some iron here. So this is a bio biome I haven't really been to before. Yeah, you might have noticed that there. So the bat kind of ran into me. I tried to hit it, didn't hit it. But I was also kind of thrown across. So yeah, the head boxes and, you know, the hit feedback on you and your enemies. That is something I feel like sh could be improved a little bit. Again, especially if there's a lot of enemies with the escape pod later on. This can feel somewhat frustrating, frankly. Or at least I see that being frustrating for some people. So far it's more like, yeah, it feels like I'm not that invested in it, just like a trade-off. Like, okay, I know I will get hit, I will just heal that. Which is usually not the intended um, way. I hope I can... Uh, how it's supposed to be. Sorry, I still try to concentrate here. There's so many enemies everywhere. Maybe I need to mine some of those to get... Ghost Veil. No, that was just tin, right? Ah, uh, for a second, or yeah, for a second I thought maybe that was iron. But also this is just... It looks like we still need to get even deeper down below. Either to the left or here. Hard to tell what we really want to go through. Oh, fossils. Kind of need those. Here again, like I, I feel like I slashed, or at least this visual indication I slashed like three times with the slime. Didn't hit it. There we go. And also so far, this is like 90% of the enemy variation we have seen here on this floor. Which, I mean, 3-4 runs, still pretty early. But so far, I haven't come across uh, too many new enemies so far. Also, the behavior is very close. Usually, the slime behaves like some of the goblins. Um, but decent. 
but it does feel somewhat early access, so to speak, which it is, of course. As you saw on the main menu, it also literally just Alpha 1. And maybe we want to try to go over here. Again, iron is where I want to go through. Is this iron? Probably not. Iron and tin and lead look so close to each other, like so similar. All right, I'm gonna look around a little bit further and oh, another cave in. Are you kidding me? How many do come here? Wow. And I see you guys in a second. Oh, th ooh, there's a skeleton. This is new. The crossbow. All right, this. Oh, God, also duck. Okay. I just was saying, man, I saw the enemy's tough. Never mind, new biome. Don't complain. This is also a good source for it. Okay. New enemies. I will take... I'll... Yeah, I will take back what I just said. Oh, this is sparkling a lot. Are you iron? I think you are iron. I should be able to mine you, but I am not able to. Ah, dang it. Another thing you can stumble upon are actually like spawn points of enemies, like these tents for the goblins. And here we actually have a pretty big amount of enemies. And again, usually it's just running in cycles, sometimes hitting the enemy. Maybe it's a little bit more obvious with the hitboxes, what I meant earlier. 79, luckily we have a pretty decent defense. I really want to attack these things, otherwise we might lose. I do like that there's a bunch of glowy there. I kind of need that. God, it's really getting dark. 63 HP, really want to try to get this tent. Is there another tent right here? It's kind of stuck in the wall. Okay, that's fine. Early access. This is just a small thing. I hope I actually do hit the tent though. Okay, 45 HP. Getting slightly more dangerous. Still running around. No idea how I did not hit the enemy there. Yeah, 36. Um, this is why we're now going to eat some meat. That heals by 15. Love the amount of glow we do. I think I got the tent. Looks like it. All right. There we go. Also, by the way, there's no like no XP gain or so. So technically, we don't really need to fight the enemies unless we know they have resources or, of course, just to defend ourselves. But it's not like we get any XP point to spend or something, which, okay, it's a choice. All right, let's collect this and see what happens after this. I finally found some iron right here. Awesome. Only two pieces, but so it has to be in this environment. Okay, fair enough. Wow, that actually took a long while. We have so much other stuff in our inventory. So this is the place we long did uh, <laughs> for a long time already did our... Oh, I like the dark music, by the way. Also, sometimes you literally hear like the dungeon shifting or so. So the audio design in general, or like how it feels down here, sometimes actually very cool when you just explore and just mine and you hear some kind of weird sounds and you're like, okay, is something coming or not? Okay, so I would really like to have a little bit more iron though. So it has to be in this area, apparently. Well, I just got lucky. So I have still have so much other stuff here, which somehow I need to use. Oh no, okay, iron it is. Not copper though. Iron, please. Oh, this is new. We have some spider. Hopefully this is not the boss, but it's something new. We have a spider egg. Yeah, let's attack that. What could possibly go wrong, right? I mean, I have seen some spiders later on. Like, usually they appear when you... At um, try to go to the escape pod. I only found two iron pieces so far, though. And apparently there's some spiders there as well. Look at the amount of enemies. Still no iron. I'm s maybe I'm just that unlucky. The thing is also the iron looked so close to a tin and, well, the, all the other resources like this. Is this iron? Five iron! Okay, we have to fight here. Gonna collect this all. Uh, I need a healing source. Okay. Let's fight all these enemies. Running around, swinging my sword, hopefully most of the time hitting the enemy. There we go, got you, got you. And the potatoes are always very useful. Yes! But this looks like exactly the other thing I was not able to craft. That's the thing. Yeah, like this! 
I guess there's a subtle dif difference. At least we have eight iron. But you have to go really deep, it seems. Well, regardless, um, at least I found some iron. We solved the, the quest. So let me actually show you what happens. Wait, let's actually heal up. That is important right now. What happens when we call the escape pod? Because now I'm like, okay, I did my missions and of course you can also call it like with a single quest i do not know if it changes how long you need to survive or how dangerous the enemies are according to the amount of missions you did but we did three we're gonna call the escape pod so it's going to arrive here and this is where we need to stay and enemies are going to appear oh i would like to place this down and try to hunt us down and we need to stay in the circle it's a bunch of slimes a couple of spiders Okay, this is fine. It's usually only a problem when all the ranged enemies appear. Also, first time I saw a spider shooting at me. That's kind of cool. And they often tend to push you outside of the circle. Well, often is kind of far stretch sometimes. And this is actually so far kind of my easiest wave. Usually it has been way more dangerous. Maybe they tweaked it since the full launch. Okay, this is fine. The ranged guys usually are the most annoying and meanest things, and there we go. And then we can just go in, can still be attacked, but luckily uh, we are safe. There we go, we're escaping. Descent completed. We get a quick look at what we did. We're gonna now return to the kingdom with a full inventory. A little, a few iron ores, luckily, that's kind of the most important thing for me. And we're gonna open this, 200 gold as always. We're gonna open this, we gain. Ooh, a key. This is the first time. I'm just gonna throw these five bones away, maybe. Oh, this flask. Do I need a flask? I don't know. Okay, let's pick up key. What is the key about? Gold key. Unlocked locked doors and chests. Okay, that's the first one as well. That's kind of cool. Or maybe I had one before. I don't know. Okay, now we're gonna open the grand chest where we did three missions for. Da -da 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 -da. And it's a couple of copper. Yeah, not that rewarding. And now I would like to craft, for example, or at least craft some iron ingots with the iron ores we gained, which is gonna be somewhere here. Tin ingot, well, at least maybe it is. I mean, I have eight iron ore. The question is, of course, how much do we need iron ingot? There we go. Or lead ingot, also very interesting. The maximum, eight. Oh, seems like because my inventory is full, can't quite do it, that's fine. Gonna drag this over here. Again, maximum stack is 64 for most items. For ammunition, apparently it's 32. Also, by the way, I should have mentioned that earlier, I have, uh, or I have found some shotgun shells. So it seems like later on you can also craft like freaking shotguns. And titanium chest pieces, of course, and go completely crazy. There's also cobalt on the stack, so it looks like these guys are actually supposed to be cobalt. Fair enough. Okay, I wanna make the iron ingots right now. There we go, maximum eight, there we go, eight. Also, sure, the lead ingots. Where is it? Ooh, 200 iron axe. Sounds so cool. Okay, that would be a weapon upgrade, which is okay. Where's the lead ingot? I still have enough. Uh, sometimes hard to see. There, we make two lead ingots with three lead ore and one coal. That's fine. So, for total, do I see what I could make with this? Probably some kind of ammunition. Not right now. Probably if I filled it a little bit better. But, okay, with the current amount of iron I have, at least I can get a weapon upgrade. That would be a two-handed iron axe. A dwarf's best friend deals eight damage and a bunch of knockback. We see the other stats and probably is a little bit slower than my sword. That is what I would guess. Let's actually try this out. So right now I have a copper sword. Longer reach compared to an axe, but can hit less in one swing. Less damage than an axe, but can swing slightly faster. There we go. Zip, zip. Now I would switch with this. And now it's this. Yeah, it's literally just very slightly slower, but damage 8 compared to damage 5. Speed 2.5, speed 1.8, reach, and knockback 6 against 1. And apparently the sweep is also bigger, even though it seems like this um, is smaller. Regardless, now I would bunk my items, probably sell a few, look at what the merchant has, maybe he has a new upgrade. Uh, cool, we could buy some dynamite. When in doubt, C4, uh, I mean dynamite. Some cooked ham, good healing item, but other than that, not really interesting stuff to be found at the merchant. I would stuff it in and then I would do the exact same thing that you saw before. And this is what below the stone is about. Like these two, 
carbonamide ore. Again, I don't even know if I have this. Maybe I should have saved my iron. Maybe that would have been slightly... Um, sorry, slightly smarter actually to try to craft an iron pickaxe first. I think that would have been the smart approach. Regardless, now rinse and repeat. This is what Below the Stone is about. And yeah, is it any fun to answer that question? Yes, it is, but it also feels still like a very early, uh, well, early access title, which it is, fair enough, right? But what you see is what you get. Please tell me what you think about Below the Stone. Please tell me what you think about my showcase and commentary thereof. I feel like I talked a lot here. I mean, I always talk a lot, maybe a little bit more than usual. Tell me if this was any informative and any fun or maybe it was a little bit too much there. Please tell me feedback is always greatly appreciated. Consider sharing the video. Make sure to stay awesome. Truly thank you for watching and we see each other in the next video.